Hello, everybody. It's Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director. And here we are in Power Director in the midst of a project facing a kind of typical situation. We have a movie running along track one there. And in addition to the soundtrack of the clips of that movie, we have a music track there. I'm using audio track three for my music track. And on audio track two, we have narration occasionally popping in. Now the challenge is we've got all of those audio sources playing at the same time at approximately the same level, or at least the music and the narration are at the same level. We're not going to be able to hear the narration. We need to be able to set specific levels of the music on the timeline so that it fades back when the narration comes in. Now there are a number of ways to do that in CyberLink Power Director, but this is probably the easiest and most effective. Now, just so we can see what we're doing, I'm gonna widen the tracks out a little, and you can do that just by hovering right along the seam there between the tracks. If you drag down, make that track just a little bigger so we can see what we're doing. And always, whenever I'm working with audio, I always turn on the audio mixer. You can find that by going to the audio mixing room here on the left, clicking on that button or pressing F9. And you can see that the audio tracks that are represented are lit up. So now our audio track for the video clips there on audio track one is lit up, as well as the music track on audio three is lit up. However, we don't see the mixer here or the VU meter for audio track two because it's under the playhead. There is no track at this time. But if I move the playhead over just a little bit so it's on the narration, you can see they're all three lit up. Now, before I did anything else, I went through here and I made sure that they all register well. Uh, in other words, I want to be able to see uh, green lines here peaking as I play through. And again, don't trust your computer speakers on this. Play the movie and watch the audio mixing room. And you'll see that we've got some pretty good volume in there. A lot of audio, but it's not peaking. It's not going into the yellow or the red area. Watch this. Some years are measured in terms of the events. There we are. We can see that track two and track three had nice full readings here on the VU meters, but they didn't peak beyond the green. They didn't go up into the yellow or the red. Now the audio on audio track one for the movie itself, I'm just going to mute out. And you can adjust the level for the entire track by using this little audio gain level right here at the base of the slider. And if I move that up and down, take a look, you can see that it adjusts the audio level for the entire track. So if I'm gonna mute that track, all I need to do is just slide that all the way over here to audio gain zero. And now I'm not gonna deal with the audio on the movie itself right now. But I do need to mix the music and the narration track. Let's make that a little bit wider. I'm gonna drag right across the ticker at the top there. That makes things, we're just gonna zoom in actually on the area where we're going to work. Move the playhead to just before we get to the narration. And then here on the music track, with the music track selected, I'm gonna hold down the control key and just create a little point there, right on that blue line. That blue line represents the audio level, of course. And if you hold down the control key, it creates a little keyframe. Let's move the playhead to right up to where the narration begins. And by the way, we can make kind of precise movements by moving it one frame at a time using the comma and the period buttons on your keyboard. Now you can see there's a little carrot pointing right and carrot pointing left on your keyboard right there at comma and period. And we can move one frame at a time, left and right, by tapping on those. So I can get pretty precise. Now once I have the playhead to right where the narration begins, I hold down the control key and I create another keyframe. And this time I'm gonna drag that keyframe down to about negative eight, negative nine. There's negative 8.9, that's great. Now let's move the playhead to where the narration ends. Once again, I'm gonna hold down the control key, and create a keyframe point. Then I'm gonna move the playhead just a little farther here to the end or just past the end of the narration. Hold down the control button. Click again to create a second keyframe point. And then I'm gonna drag that keyframe point up to about zero. And you can see it indicates on there at what level the gain is being set for the, that particular point on the audio track. So we wanna get it back to zero. That's close enough. And you can see what we've got is 
the audio at zero, which is 100% gain. Then we dip back here to negative nine decibels while the narration is playing. And then we come back up here to zero or 100% gain again. Now I wanna watch the audio track of these little yellow tips that you see on the audio clip. See them up there on the top and the bottom? Those indicate that we're getting a little bit hot. We've got a little bit high volume on there and you're gonna get distortion if you do that. So we may wanna bring that down just a tad that's a good level and you actually can get a pace going with this and do this fairly quickly. So we would do that anytime a narration clip came in. And now when we play our audio or we play our movie, you'll be able to hear the music play. And when the narration comes in, you can actually watch the meters or you'll hear it. The music will fade back and allow the narration to dominate. So let's see. Some years are measured in terms of big events, trips or celebrations. That's very nice. See, that's a nice mix right there. And that's how you mix your audio tracks there in CyberLink PowerDirector. Like I say, there are a couple of ways to do it, but to me, this is the one that makes the most sense and you can do it the most quickly and efficiently with it. If you want to know more tips and tutorials on how to use CyberLink PowerDirector, Check out the many tips and tutorials at moviepicks.com. And if you want to know everything about the program step by step, check out my book, The Moviepicks.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director Ultimate. It's available at Amazon.com. I'm Steve Grisetti, and I hope to see you at Movie Picks.